Let's continue playing King of Dragon Pass when we last left off. The Confacious tri clan was in the process of building a mighty city that would stand the test of time. Uh, enjoy good luck if we raid and the enemies would be too scared or confused and unable to raid us back. Two points into... No, actually. Herds, crops, destiny, heroism, war, diplomacy. Proceed. He's not dead. Grimminton, the town you built with coverage from the Belmere and Estraldir tribes, is now constructed and ready for inaugural ceremonies. People of the various tribes are in a celebratory mood. We're going to give gifts to both of them. We're going to give 120 gifts to both of them. Kings were delighted by their gifts. Uh, yeah, so it's not actually here. Oh well. It does not appear to be here anyway. Ah, oh, that'd be quite fun if it was on the map. But it does not appear to be. Well anyway, with that done, um, I suppose we're pretty much passing this season. Our Lester, a priestess of Marangor, mother of the Earthquakes, please your visit. You have done honour to Marangor, who is not often honoured. Fear, yes. Honoured, no. It may be that you, we are prepared to give you a gift to continue to do to deserve such a thing. The favour of Marangor will bring us power, but also make others fear us. Uh, the opportunity to pay homage to Marangor. Our Lester's gift will not, will not come without cost. If we refuse it, we must do so politely. Uh, Slider of Sacrifice to Marin Gore. Seem pleased, though with a sharp tooth smile, it was hard to be certain. Well, that'll do. We're now in fire season. And we've got a free raid, haven't we? So let's go to the Great Foxes. We're going to raid with 230 footmen, 17 weapon veins, and 48 auxiliaries. Raid. Now we're just going to plunder. Charge. Oh, excellent. Now, uh, drove the Great Foxes from the battlefield, able to plunder their Chula, captured 23 cows, 10 horses, 24 cows with loot. No casualties. One of the giant reptiles called Earthshakers gallops into your Chula, intent on eating your crops. Ogallant manages to herd it away from the barley, but it's now crashed into a stead. Many kinds of Earthshakers. Some are intelligent and cast spells, others are terrible carnivores. Eat. Some eat only plants. Let's look at the Marine Gore. Um, I think we're going to have to wait this one out. Yeah, the large amounts of our crops are wandering away. That's fine, we can live with that. Uh, a large whore, ready for company, with food laid out to nail the hand. There's no one there except an older who polished a crown and smiled. And looked up and and went to the empty hall, I take it to mean the gods would like us to visit with them. Must pay attention to their wishes and pull my hero quest soon. Well, we could do that. So you got double airlamp. I think what we want to do is send you on the all lamp and Aroka quest to try and strengthen you. Because you might just be able to replace her around if he dies. But we'll definitely have to do that next year. That would be a raid by the Tus Tusk Raiders. One magic, kill as many as possible, maneuver. That'll do. Hire some more weapon things just because we can. Dark season. Uh, maybe a good market for extra grain we want to sell. Yeah, we have lots of grain actually, so let's go to the Anzani. We wish to buy cattle, sell food, large caravan. Except it's dark season, so we're not going to get out there. Call this for all the goddess of cows, yes! Oh yes. We'll take a favour. God, we needed that. Storm season. Right, now we can go to the Anzani. Wish to buy cattle, sell food. Normally a good lamp, we try to avoid looking at the chaotic red moon that hangs in the northern sky. One night your holy people noticed that great black scars appeared on its surface. 
This means something of great import, surely. This is frightening, but perhaps it gives us a chance to patch up relations with neighbours. The moon is an invader, its light is not pure. Form a divinization ritual to perhaps explain this strange occurrence. Hero of stopping in the night, asking to be unleashed against the enemy. We warned the neighbours of the possibility of supernatural trouble. It turns out they had seen the scars too, though no one could agree on what they meant. Okay, let's end that. Oh, darn it. Of course they have more cattle than us. Oh well. And that's done then. We're now to year 1376. Proceed. Other omens, destiny, heroism, quests. That's crops. War and trade. You're still alive. How are you still alive? Word reaches you that the uh, Aranith and Tokani tribes are fighting a war with the Telmori, a str strange and savage folk who are part man, part wolf. Well, only losses have been heavy, because the Talmori know the land well. Uh, magic's unfamiliar to all anti-god talkers. Although once hostile to one another, the tribes have united behind a war leader named Kubrick John. and his leadership, the Olympia have rallied somewhat. The course still seems different. Hmm. Yes, we're gonna go. I'm gonna send Haran himself here. 11 and 40. Haran makes it to. Oh, I was worried that didn't work, actually. Haran John's encampment. You must decide how to convince him that you can make peace with the Talmori. And, and then. And that he should agree to help you build a city. We made peace before Mori tribes. We can make peace with the Talmori. It's hard to make peace with human enemies that are land feet. Then again, Argani and Jorana are, thems are themselves said to be as hungry and clever as wolves. So he would trust us to try and make peace overtures on his behalf. Let's go with Haran. 11 and 40. Pembroke John tells you where he thinks the main Talami encampment is. Haran and 51 warriors travel there. They find a trace of an encampment. They follow it to follow a trail to the current encampment and enter it. An angry Telmori interrupts in the midst of a funeral ceremony. I should be calm and reasonably. If worked, we made the other deal with Telmori. Telmori growled at us. Some of the chiefs' enchantments run, run up a bit, and Haran and his companions drew blood. They didn't kill Haran. Slowly, Haran won their trust, and they said they would, they would make peace of us if Haran would revive their slain chieftain. Telmori lead Haran to a beer in which said, Slain chieftain, Freling Creek Leaper lies dead. And bring him back to life, we will make peace with you. If you fail, we will kill you as we promised. They've forgotten their true problem. What they need is a home. Haran told them they would no longer be doomed to wander the earth, for he was creating a new kingdom here in Dragon Pass, and they would could be part of it. It will not be magic that lifts the kiss curse, but peace talk of peace, which is his own kind of magic. Tamori was swayed by this prophecy and agreed they would come and talk peace once they had chosen a new chieftain to replace Vraling Creekly. Creekly, but we are running low on sheep. But Haran is 76 and not dead. I'm actually kind of worried because I don't think we've got enough years. I really don't. But overall, things are going okay for now. It's past sea season. Traders tell you the elves have raided the Black Rocks, who are members of the Balmere tribe. It's worse than the usual raid. Black Rocks lost many lives and much wealth. Surely we can all help our allies. They will do as much for us. We're going to give them 300 food. The gratitude was unrestrained. The Earth Shaker is back, galloping in the Shula again. Ah, oh, darn it. Not again. The farmer's already happy having losing good grades in this beast's belly. We managed to drive it off. Paid no attention to our spells. <laughs> Whoops. Give it hay to eat. As arranged previously, a delegation of um, Talmori warriors, including their king, Jocelyn and many whips, has come to your plan holding to negotiate peace. What is the main thing you offer them? If we succeed, we will win the esteem of all Dragon Pass. 
long have we wandered, as if under a curse. But if territory ends our curse, we will make peace with you. People of our tribe were overjoyed to hear that this peace, and the people of the Arunwith and Tor Torkami tribes were glad that the Telmori War was finished. Okay, we're doing brilliantly well. Fire season, I think we now need to go and do a hero quest. Which we could do with being successful here. We're going to go all out for Naroka and we're going to send you. We want to make the quest stronger. We know this one, so I'm just going to buzz through it. Seduce. Whoa, yeah, uh, fight it then. Normally that works for seduction, but apparently um, our grand isn't Taran. Do as Tomball says. Yes. There wasn't enough pasture land for all our livestock. Oh, malnutrition. Pet and Thanes from the Gerenin clan come seeking the aid of your and my priests. I found this strange scroll while exploring underground tunnels infested by chaos creatures. We will give you ten cows if your priests can perform magic which tells us what the scroll says. We have no special relationship with them, but their attitude towards us is already positive. We shouldn't make undue sacrifices for them. The service they ask of us is not worth much more than ten cows, but we can live for it. Uh, magic is strong now. Yeah, we'll accept their offer. We're still not decide for the um, contest of the scroll. Gerenning's feigns for displeased. They said they had wasted the cows they gave us. Ah, never a waste. Don't know, we had a pasture land. There we go. Right, that should fix that. It's end of season. Mafka, daughter of the Fane, Aski has gone missing. Ah, oh, this again. Nesty Khan is near to a feud with us. Uh, they agree to our demand. The peace of your new town is threatened by squabbling between kings of the Balmir and Estram Estraldea tribe. Many migrants have come from Pjordland to work as artisans and traders in Quiverton, claiming allegiance not to any clan but to the town itself. Since these new people belong to no tribe, the kings each claim the right to demand gifts from them. Which has led to fights between the Thanes and the true tribes, but no serious blows have been struck so far. We must create a, a town ring to settle the disputes. We are fighting because there is no one to make final decisions in this new town. You were right. You only way to preserve this town, which makes well for us, is to create a town ring. And so each of the three tribes made a clan ring, each of them seating some of its own members on the ring. We are approaching kingdom territory now. We are close. Skip dark season. Shaman's return to your tuna. You are prosperous now. You may not know this, but it's partly our doing. You refuse us politely, and we told the spirits hereabouts not to disturb you. We told some of them of your generosity and the great deeds of your ancestors. Like the shaman is a hard one. What better objects for our generosity than the spirits? Eh. Uh, we can afford to spare a treasure. Not what we're giving them, I don't know. We're giving them the bag of wins. The demonstration is the bag of wins. They thanked us profusely and said they would continue to worship spirits to aid us. Five magic. Oh, well. Apologies for that. I'm going to clip the top and that caused things to go slightly wrong. Um, I'm going to add right now. I don't think we really want to raid during storm season at this stage. I will send a mission, though. To them, large caravans sell sell goods, buy cattle. Go. The orphan girl, Kellia, the one you took in after another woman raised her in a shield, has grown up. She's now a fine young woman with ambitions to be a warrior. She's joined the warrior woman's cult of Vigna. You can see from the bruises on her sparring partner, she has a real talent for fighting. One seems almost superhuman. The other warriors are proud of Kellia, and a feast in her honor would give them cheer. The oldest and grizzled of our weapon fades the door, Kalia. You see her as flesh of their flesh. Um, if we send a tree another clan, it will strengthen the ties between them. All the feasts in her honour. Warriors are greatly pleased that Kalia would stay among us. Here we go. Horsewon come to Quiverton and surround its walls. They haven't attacked the town yet, but from their postures, it's clear they might do so at any time. Raska was a fool who tried to make a kingdom by threatening war. We have found another way. At first, the horsemen were angry. Then they laughed. Then something strange happened. The grizzled elders spurred the horses to the middle of the formation, where their leaders were. They consulted with their war leaders, who looked surprised and confused. Their parley lasted for a long time. Then the war leaders spoke up. 
Maybe there are certain prophecies. They make your strange offer acceptable. So we will not kill you now. In one season, send Haran and a delegation to seek audience of our great queen. And they rode off. Their plans were interrupted. Though the Grey Fox's plans for war are never interrupted. Take captives, maneuver. Uh, you don't worry, it's the victory. We were unbeatable. There was a bit of fighting, our magic smote them mightily. We weren't able to get any captures, two horses. How are we doing for weapon things, actually? Just take us up to for 20. Trade it for four cattle. And now we're being attacked by the Tusk Raiders. Kill as many as possible, maneuver. Well, here we are again. Difficult now, but I think we're approaching the end. Proceed. Oh, God, war. <laughs> it's always war. Herds, crops. Two points in diplomacy. Proceed. Haran, how are you still alive? You're 77. It's time for Haran to, to lead the delegation to meet with a feathered horse queen. But he will pursue his offer of marriage to the horse spawn monarch. The entire clan ring goes with him to witness these negotiations, and if need be, to defend their king. What is the first thing Haran does upon meeting the favoured horse queen? Thanks for these generous acts, observing that other Alanthi were not as worthy as he. We are going to offer her 200 gifts. She gave him a sword and a bracelet of woven horsehair in exchange. The horse queen says she will sponsor a contest. In order to win the contest, Haran must pass three great tests of Vera. The test must be chosen by Ferena Bruceleia, High Priestess of Marangor. Winner of the contest gets to marry her and become King of Dragon Pass. Haran will be one of several contestants. Right. The delegation leaves the Grazier camp. Haran meets the other contestants for the hand of the feathered horse queen. One is the form is Orem Novartian Twinsing, King of the Northern Orland, the Kingdom of Tarsh. The other is Sorinel, king of the local Torkani tribe. Hi, see who would be also king of Dragon Pass. It'd be folly to taunt and attack them, but a well phrased taunt might bring a cheer or two to our warriors' hearts. Such as respect us, we speak reassuring words to their king. I make the same assurance, godly, goodly King Haran. Honourable friend Haran, such assurance is redundant, for the name of your clan is known for our Dragon Pass. Accompanied by his clan ring, Haran proceeds to the hidden temple of Marangor, goddess of earthquakes and destroying earth. He rests an audience with its high priestess, Farina Bruceleia. The terrifying earth crone waddles from her high seat in the hall and looks Haran in the eye. Osborne had a rebellion, and now revere earth above sun. So I have agreed to, to act as gatekeeper of the tests instead of seeking to destroy them. But how do I know you are worthy to learn of the tests? Perhaps you are weak or unwise, and would be better off retiring to your chula to herd sheep. I know I am worthy. How else will convince her of this? Your words ring true, so I should open the gate to awareness. First, you must tame a dragon. Then you must win the favour of a brass man. Finally, you must mate with a dragon, and hereby win the blessing of the goddess Kerry Finn. Just being overly careful here because Haran is 77. I don't. I've never had anyone that old. He might be keep kept alive by the spirits, but honestly, I'd be surprised if he lasts another two, two years or three years if he needs to. In any case, what we need to do now? We need to ask actually for cows. Us a favor, the brown boars do. Uh, ask for cattle. Send. Customary number of cows got for obligation is 10. Uh, 15. Granted a request and said we were generous. Cows of your clan are excited to see a rainbow to shown in one of your fields. As a lanthi, you are the storm people, and there are few omens as positive as a rainbow. We will get left by the gods in the wake of a storm. Maybe we would use some good luck. Hmm. 
I think we should thank the girl for the sacrifice. We're going to thank... We're going to thank Orlaf. And we're going to sacrifice... A hundred goods. The gods returned our gift. Yay, we have more magic. Let's give him the rest of that. Oh, darn it. Fine. A large amount of hay and wandered off. We're going to have that repeating coming on. It's going to keep coming back, I know, but... We do not want to piss off Marangor right now. Yeah. Let's answer the patrols a little. Let's go and... Ah, uh, we'll skip this for now. Too many hunters for the wild lands. They can hunt in. So let's let some of... Yeah, we need to do that. Um... Yeah, we're going to give them more than the customary amount. Here we go. Word reaches you that a dragon has repeatedly visited the Tudor of the Clan Orlandi of the um, Estraldia clan tribe, and they've wasted their stairs to his fiery breath. Around his manures, he jumps through his throat, exclaiming that this is the first test which Marangor, the Shamarangor Crow and Priestess have told. Tell the dragon a new time has come. Yes. 8 and 30. Around his delegation went to the Orlandi Tudor, where a dragon soon appeared and approached it, and it seemed surprised. The dragon reached for Horan and grabbed him in one of its great claws. Then it rubbed up the king against its iridescent scales. Its bodyguard were alarmed at first, but just just seemed to be a friendly one. Then the dragon disappeared as if it had been nothing more than a dream. One down. <laughs> I'm saving that. That can go so horribly wrong, it's not fair. But, one down. Earth season. Let's continue. Mission, we're going to go down to the Moldings. We're going to ask them buy cattle, sell goods, medium caravan. Yes, it's always better to give them the cow. They needed all their cattle. Ooh, the brass man. Word reached you, the man of brass has been seen wandering about the northwest of the foothills and the Quidini Mountains. The curious figure must relate to the next stage of the contest. Spirit saw answers told us the brass man would be a friend in disguise. However they warned, we should have warriors with him, even we're going to meet a friend. And send him with a hundred gifts. And we're going to send eight weapon fanes and thirty footmen. For many weeks, the king journeyed through the mountains until he found the brass man. Horan offered his gifts to the man of brass, who raised his faceplate and revealed himself as a dwarf in brass armor. He a scroll which he kept in his belt and squinted at it. Most useful materials, all criteria fulfilled. Very well, I'll not shoot you. The dwarf kept walking. Horan shouted after him, asking if he had gained favor. Yes, yes, not waste time. Schedule, schedule. We didn't meet the dwarfs in this playthrough, but they are, um. They are up here somewhere, and basically. A little weird they are actually, but they always stick to this schedule and um, yeah, it's a little weird. I've only ever managed to get into their mouse and meet them once. Uh, we don't want to go into dark season. Don't want to do anything, we're just going to be there. Hugman is broken out within the tribe. Central to the tribe of Regalia is an ancient legendary weapon known as the Black Spear. Some clans are claiming that if the spear is too useful to be used only for ceremonies. It should be used by powerful war clans to hunt and fight. I would say it is too risky to use a spear. It is damaged. The spirit of a tribe will be wounded, maybe even destroyed. We have carefully turned it to our relations with our tribe mates. Now we will wait to see what hear what they have to say. Uh, we're all <sighs> When all have made the first clan, a spirit fell from a dark cloud. I am Water, the spirit of this clan you have made. Just a carefully, it shows we not do not care about the tribe. Um The spirit of our tribe said that new clan sh a new clan should be made, the Black Spear Clan. The king should be... We call it disaster, we do. That's your tribe of fighting. Fighting over whether your king is properly fulfilling his duties. Some of the clans are fierce supporters of King Haran, or at least of a land virtue of supporting chosen leaders. I feel the king has failed to uphold other land virtues of pride, courage and generosity. Now it's a hero quest. No chances here. We're taking you in. Alright. 
Alright, improve the mood of a tribe. I'm just gonna go through this. Like both of them. Oh darn it. Regalia. There we go. Paul Clan saw the king still enjoyed all that's blessings, and so he became willing to work out differences with him. The king said he felt wiser and stronger than before. Right, so now that Haran has tamed the dragon and won the brass man's fate, but it's time for him to mate with the mountain. Dear God, we are really... I nearly bluffed this up completely before this thing. God would say that the mountain must be Carathir, the mother of all Anth and the guardian of Dragon Pass. What does Haran do in preparation for this mystical mating? I only pray the goddesses find me worthy. Why should you gift the cars? It's a force of arms to make a king. This could be risky. What Doctor said the omens were good. The Haran should enter Carathin's cave naked and literally mate with the earth. Seven weapon planes. There we go. The mountain shook and Haran knew that he gained the blessing of Carrifin, and with it, sovereignty over Dragon Pass. As he excited, exited the cave, he saw the ghosts of all the clans dead cars gathered below. The ghosts cheered for him, heralding his great turning point in the history of Dragon Pass. Haran has passed a test and now returns to the land of the people you once called Horsespawn. They're now and are they and now trying hard to remember as grazers. Yeah, he plans to tell the feathered horse queen that he has passed the earth test. What does he say to her? <laughs> um, no. We already know. She said the wedding would occur when the earth season next began. If he dies now, if he dares to die now, I will be absolutely livid. Um, yeah, we've got nothing else we can do. Storm season. A all land by the Hendark clan stumbles onto your clan lands begging for help. We realise it's a lot to serve, uh, but we can no longer serve the Hendati, who mistreat us terribly. For all, can I take so much injustice before he must rise up and strike a blow for freedom? As far as this for all call them and incited a rebellion on Hendart Shula. He and several thralls killed several Hendati and fled into the woods. If we help call them in, we offend the Hendati. Uh... Turn him away. Corlin returned to his group, and he and the other thralls escaped their pursuers, but later heard they migrated to the other parts of Dragon Pass, where they were soon take taken as thralls by another clan. No omens, heroism, destiny. War trade crops herds. He's not dead! Right, we just have to survive three seasons. Kestol, the member of the Apple Clan, says he's been trying to get a magnificent white stag. Together they caught the stag and it was a magnificent beast indeed. There's enough glory for both clans. Fire season. What would... Alright, we're going to have one last all out raid on the Grey Foxes. Just to end everything. Grey Foxes. We raid you. Oh. Return home. We have too many hunters in the wildlands. Oh yeah. Where are we? We don't need that much, that many hunters. Olgandi, a tall young warrior of the Poliski, wishes to marry Anofa, daughter of a chief. He has come I'm with Ingard, the Poliski law speaker, to help lead his case. I have a forge an alliance. We are proud to have my daughter's marriage provide the spark. We slaughter 30 cows for the weapon feast. Let's put a toast to our clan at the weapon feast. Wedding feast. 
Haran is now ready for the marriage to make him king of Dragon Pass. The inhuman king, King Lord High Dragonute, has come to officiate at the wedding. He gives his blessings to Haran. You have taken pieces of old things and made them into new, powerful things. You have made things better by turning them into opposites. You have stopped the war by turning it into stones and mortar. You have made peace by conquering a wolf. You have found the ancient secrets of the earth and now use them to make another new thing, joining together the people of cows with the storm and with the people of the horses and the sun. The inhuman king could say more, but does not. Although not even Haran knows it yet, the inhuman king knows what is to come. This is the first day of a great new kingdom, a kingdom that will one day take Haran's name. If in the years ahead Haran is true to his wisdom and mystical insight, he will one day become a god. Insisted all that aside, the kingdom he leaves behind will grow and strengthen, and the exploits of its future kings and princes will become a legend. They will one day enter a desperate struggle with a great empire, and its last king will forever change the face of the world. All of this was possible because of the courage and forethought of the Kinthesos Tran of the Madova tribe, who came to Dragon Pass when it was wild and remade it in their own age. This was King of Dragon Pass. Time Shadow 2012. And what a game. What a game indeed. Seed. We shall save the game. Saga complete. And that is the end. And for whatever reason, now this is cut out and gone back into that. So, anyway, I was King of Dragon Pass. Until next time.